This tutorial is part of a YouTube course playlist and a Udemy course. You can access the first phases of this course on YouTube or the whole course at Udemy. Links to both can be found in the video description. Assuming that you are now familiar with Docker and have installed Docker desktop, we'll now go ahead and create a Postgres SQL container for our development project. In this project, we will be utilizing multiple containers so we're going to be utilizing Docker Compose. Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker application. It's going to allow us to use a YAML file to configure the services, maybe some networks or volumes for our application containers, making it easy for us to manage more complex deployments. We're going to add Docker Compose to the root directory here. Okay, Docker Compose. And now what we need to do is describe the services that we need to run. So we're going to start off with a Postgres database. So we define the version of the code that we're using. So I think it's 3.9 as of recording. So that's just describing the code that we're using, the format, the syntax that we're using within this Docker Compose file. So Docker knows how to actually read this. So let's start off with defining our services. So we're going to create a new service called dev dev db. This is the development database. Okay, so we need to first of all define an image. Now remember, the image is where we're going to the image is what we're going to download from Docker Hub, what we're going to use as the image for in this case Postgres. It's going to have everything it needs to actually run a Postgres database. So what I can do, if I go back to Docker Hub, I can take a look and check out the different versions that I might want to use. So the latest is 16.2 as a recording, but you'll notice that there are different versions of this. So we have the bullseye version, we have a bookworm version, we have an alpine version. So this is just different versions with underlying different systems potentially being utilized to, or platforms being utilized to run Docker within the container. So we're going to be utilizing Alpine. Alpine here is a reference to the Alpine Linux distribution. It's known for its lightweight and minimalistic nature. So we're going to be downloading a potentially a smaller image by utilizing the Alpine Docker image version of Postgres. So back in the code, we just need to define what version we're using. So that's going to be Postgres 16. Point, uh, let's go for 16.1 now you can change this as a recording. This might be the latest version, but you might prefer to use whatever is new. Now do be careful because there may be some breaking changes. Unlikely, um, as long as you're using version 16, it should be okay. But just to be careful um, with that, there may be some breaking changes if you are following along step by step and using a, a later version than what I've specified here. We do want to make sure that should the container fail or have any problems, we want to try and restart it. So we're just going to select always. Now, by default, we can't necessarily access. So if this is Docker on this side, we can't necessarily access our container running in Docker unless we actually specify or define a way of doing that. So here in our app over here at the moment, or at least by default, our app could not access our Docker container. Uh, because we've not necessarily specified how that is possible. So what we're going to need to do is open up a port. So ports, if you to try and describe what a port is, a network port, let's just think of it as a doorway. So this app needs to open up a door in order to access this service. So we need to specify a port number or a door number. So we can specify maybe a number 5555. So that's the port number that we define here or the door number to open up. And then we need to specify the fact that when we send data to this port, to this door, that it needs to be then uh, translatable or needs to pass it over to this service, in this case, Postgres. And Postgres is going to be running on a different service number. So Postgres by default runs on 5432. So we need a way of just specifying the fact that when we send any data to this port number, to this door, um, it's going to be then sent across to this door within Docker, and then Docker is going to need to know what to do with that data when that door opens. So 
we need to specify the fact. Mm. Now, by default, we cannot access the container. So when the container runs, whatever it might be, when the container runs, our computer cannot necessarily access that directly, or should I say our application cannot necessarily access that directly. We will be communicating with our container through the internal network of our computer. So we need to follow some basic networking principles. Now, Docker here, obviously our container is running in our Docker environment. It knows all about its containers because it's in the Docker environment. Now, by default, the Postgres database, it runs and listens for any data that's sent to 5432. That's the port number. So what happens is any data that comes into Docker that's uh, specified for this port number, Docker is going to automatically forward that information to, in this case, our Postgres database. So that our Postgres database is listening on that port number. So any data that's sent to that port, it's going to find that Postgres database service. So what we need to do is we need to tell our computer as well. well we don't necessarily need to tell our computer, but we need to send data in a way so that Docker can receive that data and then send it to the particular um, container. So within our application, we would need to specify the port number that we want to send data on. So let's just say that port number is uh, 5555. Five, five, five. Okay, so that's where we're sending data from. So when we want to build a connection or work with our database, we're going to send our data to that port number. So we need to map this port number to the port number that's being utilized in our container. So within our configuration, we're going to need to specify the port that the computer is using to send data and the port that's being utilized by our service, in this case, Postgres database, and the default port it uses is 5432. So when we send data on the network to port 5555, what's going to happen now is Docker is going to capture that and then it's going to send it across to our container. So we're going to need to specify a port number. So not post, a port number, a port, sorry. Uh, so let's go ahead and define. First of all, we define the port number of the computer that we're going to use. So let's just go for 5432. Right, so we're going to use that port number and we know, like I just told you, that the Postgres database also uses 5432. So we're just mapping a local port to now the container port. A lot of software will have a default port. So just be careful to make sure you check out what that is. And what we can't do, of course, if we have multiple Postgres database, we couldn't so if we were to set up, which we will do a separate database, so a testing database, then we can't use the same port because this port is currently being used to send to this container. So we're going to need to use separate numbers. So this can be three, this can be four. So this is what our computer is going to be using to send out the data for this test database. And this is where it's going to be mapped to this containers port. And the same with this scenario here. But we need to make sure that the first number this is the computer port number that we're using is different. Now, the reason why these, this internal number can be the same, because this is obviously internalized, this is in the container. So it's isolated from the rest of the, com the computer. So it's an isolated environment, so we can use whatever port we want. It can be the same as other containers. Now, if you read through the documentation, it will provide you some additional information. And in this case, in order to bring up a Postgres database, we are going to need to provide some additional information. And that's potentially going to be the Postgres password. And we can also supply additional information such as the Postgres user, because we are going to need to log in to Postgres. We are going to need some security. We don't want anyone to be able to just access our database. So we're going to need to set that up. So at least initially, what we can do is just pass in some, what happened there, some environment settings so a Postgres user, so I'm just going to set everything to the same. This isn't obviously a secure way of working, um, but I'm just going to set that up. This is going to be uh, inventory. So we're going to create a database called inventory. Okay, so username, password, and database name. So we've just passed in some different environment variables. That's going to change how the container um, is set up. 
obviously it's going to create a new username and password in this case and a new database called inventory. So let's see that in action. So I just open up my terminal. You can do it from the terminal up here. I'm going to use the shortcut all the time. So let's go ahead and now actually run this. So I'm just going to clear out anything I have. So it's obvious what's happening here. So I've cleared all the images and containers. There are no containers or images running. So to run this, I'm going to run Docker Compose. And then I'm going to use up. So I can just use build. That would just uh, create uh, the image or download the image. But I'm going to use up. That's going to download the image. And then that is going to then start the new container. Now, in addition to that, I can also pass in the D flag. I have in the documentation, if you look at the docs file, included a Docker file or Docker Compose file, and it gives you more information about the different flags that you can use. So here we're using detached mode, which means ultimately that we don't get any of the uh, terminal information that we would do if we didn't run it. So let me just show you an example of that because it's probably easier to, to see. So let's not run D, let's go Docker Compose up. Now that's going to take a couple of seconds to begin with because we're having to actually download the image like you can see here. But the second time we do this, it won't take that long. So if we now look at Docker Desktop, we can see that the Postgres image has downloaded and you can see that the container is now running. If you take a closer look at the ports here, it's actually running on uh, port 5432 internally and it's mapped across to the our computer's port, which is 5433 as we specified in the Docker Compose file. Notice what you're looking at here. This is all the terminal information from our actual container. Now, the problem with this is that it gets in the way. And we can also, we can just look at that information from the actual container here. So if I go into this container, I can actually have a look at the logs here. Um, that can make it easier for me to view and inspect if there is any problems. So I don't necessarily need all this output here. So this is why we use D, detach mode. So we don't have that additional information. So if I just control C that, and I run this again, but with the D flag, this time you can see that we're passed back to our terminal and we can go ahead and continue working within the terminal. Now you can see what's happened here is that it's created, if we have multiple containers, it's created these multiple containers within this project, this stack here representing the project. So we can change this name here. What's happened is that Postgres, or sorry, uh, Docker has identified the name of our project. So if we go back to our project name at the top here, it's utilizing that to actually define this set of containers within this project. Now we can change that. So if we go back into our uh, compose file at the bottom here, if we just go ahead and specify the name, in this case, fast API development, and we run that once again, we go back, you can now see, um, we try to create this new project called Fast API Development. So let me just uh, close everything up. So I'm just going to delete all those containers. We do that again. Looks like there might have been some conflict here because we're binding the same ports. And there we go. So we've now changed the project name.